Hi. Good evening. Hey, good evening. Good evening, Amit and Sumi. Really the last time. The last yeah. day. Don't say like that. We'll meet again. <laughs> so as we come to the end, thank you everybody. Atma Namaste. Um, apologize for a slight delay with, our, with my meditation. Uh, and so a couple of minutes late today. So let's close our eyes. Let's prepare ourselves for the session today. Inhale and exhale, relax. Let's align ourselves to the study session for today. Our last session on the book, Etheric Double. Let's also feel ourselves in the presence of God, all the great teachers, especially of theosophy, of knowledge, of wisdom, to our teacher, Grand Master Chur, let's feel gratitude, respect, and love to them for being with us all through our journey. Let's also thank our fellow classmates who've sat through the session. We've done it together. We've tried to study together. And so to everyone in this group, Atma Namaste, thank you for being with us. Without you, this may not be completely possible. Thank you. So let's invoke to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. We humbly invoke for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your guidance all through this entire session. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chua Koksui, to Lord Maha Guruji Mele. To all the great teachers, masters of theosophy, to the great beings of knowledge, wisdom and light, to the great beings of education, to the Lord Christ. To the invisible and spiritual beings present, to our soul and divine self, to the great beings and angels of communication, of the internet and our respective Wi-Fi's, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings as we come to the end of our journey with this study session. Thank you for your consistent, constant presence, for your patience with us. Thank you for helping us understand on a deeper, clearer level these priceless teachings and to use this knowledge to become better instruments. We ask you to continue to help us assimilate this knowledge, to use it as we continue to offer ourselves as healing instruments, as instruments to help others spiritually evolve. We thank you in full faith, with gratitude, with deep respect and with much love, we thank you. Atma Namaste. Welcome everybody. So we are literally here at the end of the book, <coughs> the end of the session, and uh, it's barely a page plus. So that's where we're going to end. So today we will go to the conclusion. So it starts off uh, where yesterday we ended saying that uh, if you look at the concept of energy, maybe as time goes, medicine will try to understand more and more about it. And as they understand more and more about it, it would be part of uh, the medical treatment that one would go for, both for the dense body and the energy body, right? But it also says here uh, that if you look at it, that the, they also mention that this etheric phenomena, the deeper understanding of this et etheric phenomena will be given to man only when he is able to use it effectively. It's not just going to be given anytime and every time. Right. And so they say the student of occultism, however, will recollect the warning that men will not be permitted to release the almost incalculable forces latent in atomic matter. That is what we've been talking about in this entire book until it is assured that such forces will only be used to benefit others, to make this world basically a better place. But you see, even in the old days, um, Hundreds of years ago, there were a lot of these things revealed to the human race. But the purposes, though it was initially meant for being beneficial, were then used for also destructive purposes. So if this system is then used for destructive purposes, then, of course, further discoveries will be delayed, unfortunately. 
And maybe that's why in these hundred years, we haven't gone very far with what's happening with energy because maybe man hasn't still learned how to use the earlier discoveries that they've gone through. So to move further, it, it is further evident that the discovery of the etheric grades, yes, uh, so just like with medicine, when it started off, it was just like general medicine, but today they've specialized. Probably even with the etheric energy, there would be probably grades and different qualities. So the grades of matter will open up new vistas both in chemistry and physics. So when you read the book, like the Tao of Physics and stuff, you already realize that they are looking at concepts beyond what <clears throat> physics was 100 years ago. They've already started opening up their gates and may even be turned useful on account of other things like the production of food. Yes, so imagine the food induced with better energy, which means if that energy is consumed by the body, it's going to be healthier, not just organic food, but also the energy component added to it and substances of all kinds of electrical conductors or insulators and also the kind of clothes that you and I wear, the material that we use. If it could be etheric, it, it could also look at the etheric quality uh, before it is used and many other substances used in daily life. So if most of your daily consumption usage is has not just a physical component that you look for when you go to pick it up or buy, you also look at the etheric component, right? The grade, right? maybe the ISI will be different. It's not just physical, but there will be another system altogether to see if the etheric grade is also good in that which we consume, which we wear, which we use. Finally, both uh, on its own intrinsic account and also as a stepping stone to knowledge and even higher things, a recognition by orthodox scientists of the existence of this etheric body would actually change a lot of things. And uh, the study of its constitution and behavior, both of which we venture to think cannot now be long delayed. So they're hoping that this merging, right, this marriage between the two would happen faster than later because it would really definitely benefit the human race where sickness has definitely not been completely eradicated. There are a lot of great uh, souls who are here who are trying to do this, trying to eradicate diseases from many countries, trying to do whatever we can. Right now, the COVID-19 is the one that we are all fighting, uh, the scientists and others. But if they could also understand that there is an energy component to it, maybe the kind of work that they need to do combined might actually bring about better results. And so they say, may prove a firm foundation on which may be raised a vast superstructure of knowledge of ultra physical things. Yes, and so what we will have in the future, if this is what's gonna happen, will be definitely amazing. For, uh, in brackets, uh, to adapt and abridge the closing powers of the, um, I, I, I really don't remember much from this book. Uh, the, did you mention this book before, The White Lotus? Okay, so we've not really done much, I don't remember, and, and because he's bringing it back here, I, I don't remember the, uh, the connection. That which is to some, uh, sorry, that which is to come is grandier, more majestically mysterious than the past. So obviously what is in store once there is this combination uh, we can't even imagine and fathom what it could be. That's what they say. The human imagination uh, cannot really even comprehend what this might bring about in the future. And so it says, by slow and imperceptible progress, the teachers of men drink their life from pure sources and take their message more directly from the soul's existence. So uh, for me, my understanding is, the, the human uh, race by itself will start to look at things very, very differently at this point where they say that the teachers of men drink their life from better, cleaner sources, which is hopefully not diluted with other, uh, maybe unnecessary knowledge or information. But at the same time, uh, they also say that uh, the message is more direct from where you and I actually come from. That is uh, basically our higher soul or the Atma in Sanskrit. Yes, or the son of God as in the Christian connotation. So we're basically saying that by that time, uh, the 
the kind of knowledge that man would get based on this and more is that when we continue to exist on this earth, our existence won't be just us, the incarnated soul, not just us, the uh, Jivatma, but we will start to connect with our higher soul more regularly. It will be very common for you and I to have that connection consistent and using that con uh, connection and that energy that comes through to do work in this, in this world, right? So that's what they're talking about. And they say life has, sorry, life has in it more than what the imagination of man can actually conceive. The real blossom of life grows above the stature of man and its bulb drinks deep from the river of life. So basically we're talking about this life God. Remember, I think Amit mentioned it earlier. So, so the energy actually comes through that. Remember when, when we're conceived, that's the one that comes down and gives us the life source. So we connect to that more to continue to exist according to probably for me also your destiny what is it your plan that you want to bring to this life uh, right now what is your purpose you are better aligned to that and with all this extra information with the energy component added to your your surroundings a uh, life will be completely different in the heart of that flower man will read the secrets of the controlling forces of the physical plane and will see written within it signs of mystical strength so a lot of this is basically uh, the truths that have been hidden in a lot of our holy scriptures given by great spiritual teachers but sometimes it's given in in you know story form and sometimes in the information is so complex <laughs> that you really can't figure out what they're trying to say right but these mysteries will slowly be revealed to us to be able to use this to have better uh, better control over who we are, what we do, what we say and think and do, and also probably how we take care of the physical plane. Now for me, the physical plane is just not you and I. It's also the existence of all the other kingdoms on earth. How do we respect them? How do we realize that, you know, when we do this to the plant and we do this to the animal or we do this to the forest, we are actually causing harm and we're causing an imbalance in the world around us. So for me, basically, as these truths come out, more and more and it's, it's common. Uh, for example, they say that little kids today are quite aware, especially if, if it's part of their educational system, uh, that they shouldn't, they shouldn't waste too much of water, right? They need to turn off the lights. Something that I think for us, um, I mean, my generation much, much earlier, we were like that. We were born uh, and brought up in a way that, you know, you couldn't turn off uh, lights if it's, sorry, turn on lights in any room if it's not being used, if someone is not there. Right? We did not uh, waste a morsel of food on our plate. We had to drink everything. We had to eat everything. Uh, even having a bath, I remember, was just like half a bucket of water, right? Today, of course, we very generously use the shower and other things. But everything was very, very uh, limited for us, <laughs> including our intake of sweets and festival uh, offerings. Anyway, let me move on. He will learn how to expound spiritual truths and to enter into the life of his highest self. And he can learn also how to hold within him the glory of that higher self. And yet, sorry, and yet to retain life upon this planet so long as it lasts. So till this earth literally disintegrates, the, that uh, human race, even at that point, will continue to have greater connection with their higher soul and work with a better purpose when they come here. Uh, to, to continue to manifest what Master Cho says, manifest your greatness. Yes. Um, yes. And if need be, to retain life in the vigor of manhood till his entire work is completed. That for me is his destiny, to be able to complete his destiny this lifetime. He has taught to all who look for light these three truths. And so these three truths are very, very spiritual in nature. Um, and so I'll just uh, look at it really quickly with you. And after that, we more or less ended with the session today. Right. So the first is that uh, the soul of man is immortal. Its future and its future. Sorry. Uh, its future is the future of a thing whose growth and splendor has no limit. And you've got to remember that the human being 
uh, we are here right now this lifetime with this body but we who we really are is the atma or the higher soul and that is immortal and it will continue to evolve and grow bringing up bringing down and learning more lessons in light love and power so it may become a better instrument with reference to whatever it has to manifest the principle the second one the principle which gives life is in us and without us right and so that is what we're talking about again the higher soul the energy of the soul is not just within this physical body that you can touch it's both inside and outside around it is undying and eternal beneficent is not heard or seen or smelt uh, i think uh, lord krishna also says it beautiful, beautifully he says uh, this uh, immortal soul that we have cannot be burnt cannot be drowned cannot be killed right so similarly it at the same time cannot be smelt it cannot be seen uh, but it's not physical right yeah it's it, in the sense that it's not with reference to the physical form but yes uh, clairvoyantly people do see it but it's perceived by man who desires to know about it and can then of course perceive it and the last one is that uh, man is or rather what whatever we do this lifetime we are the ones who create our future right so whatever comes in the future whether good bad or ugly we are the ones who create that we are the law giver as they say uh, and and whatever happens we have to judge ourselves and recognize that what we did to others will come back to us yes and that's the simple uh, thing at the end which is talking about reward and punishment that's got to do with what you do or what you sow you will reap so all these truths are there in these amazing books and that was a reference uh, amit has done many of those references and given it back to you so these are the books that have been quoted in this uh, entire book the the entire compilation by arthur powell is from basically most of these books and that's the one that's quoted here i'll end with that and uh, i'll hand it over to amit yeah so that's the end actually from me thank you um <clears throat> see what they're basically saying is man will continue to you see we are busy exploring uh, and this has been said by i think numerous people maybe saints also i think definitely saints we are busy exploring the universe we are busy exploring um the the waters the earth what's underneath here what's in the sky what's in the food but we are not started to explore ourselves uh on mass <laughs> you know like um what percentage of the population has even thought of exploring themselves has even thought of saying okay many people are thinking now physically because they're so physically involved they like uh, and that's not their fault because from birth we've been you know on the physical plane so where you know uh, you know the physical body has to move the physical body has to get up the physical body you know when you're a baby so then energy follows thought so you're stuck the problem is it gets stuck there which is very very common very normal why it happens we don't know but people have wondered because of that what happens to my body when i die okay your body is not there so what happens to me when i die but they have not thought what happens to my thoughts and emotions when i die like my troubles are they still with me or not <laughs> cuz if i can't do anything about my troubles then i don't even, i can't even do anything at that point so uh any anger resentment hatred do i have what happens to that when i die we've not even on mass gone to that second stage forget the first stage the first stage is physical body most almost everyone now is wondering what's happening especially with the pandemic but then slowly people will be wondering what happens to my thoughts and emotions i'm a little bit upset i'm very angry i have this problems here problem there what happens to that do i still have that issue when i die when my physical body dies do i experience that trauma uh what happens to all the trauma that i experience anxiety and then mentally what happens right forget spiritually we're on the spiritual uh, uh, spiritual level so what they're saying is once people start to understand uh that that you need to get rid of it whether you're in the body or out of the body it's faster to start getting rid of it while you're in the body they'll start to do meditation they'll start to cleanse their not only physical body through cleansing process and doing uh keto diets or cleansing or you know other fasts but they will also start to do emotional and mental cleansing and they will also start to do certain meditations certain procedures so so that they're emotionally and mentally free of uh, of uh, garbage and uh, then they will start to slowly uh, obviously eat food 
they're talking about food that is uh, nutritious in prana. Or what did they say about the food? Something. May turn useful. So when they're saying like um, before that, you know, uh, scientific, you know, things have been destroyed. They say, yes, it'll be revealed, but in phases, because you, you cannot reveal techniques without a heart. Can you imagine giving uh, a gun to a five-year-old boy? I mean, it's very destructive. Uh, or uh, rather than that, uh, maybe nuclear devices or nuclear um, energy. Uh, you know, most of the discoveries have been misused. And I think it was Einstein also who didn't expect it later on to be used in that manner, uh, was expecting it probably to be used. I might be mistaken. But most of the discoveries we use, we use for our personal benefit. The reason of that is because of lack of development of the love aspect or the love or the, you know, uh, you know compassion. So this love the, in Buddhism is called compassion. In, uh, in Christianity, they call it forgiveness. Different words meaning the same thing. Development of the heart. Okay. Uh, development of the heart. So until the heart develops, uh, it cannot be guaranteed that you're going to use this uh, properly, you know. You might know secret techniques to destroy uh, destroy energy for the purpose of destroying emotions and thoughts that have plagued you for a long time, you know, thoughts and emotions or traumatic memories. But you might use it to destroy someone else's memories. How do you guarantee, no, you can't do that. Someone cuts you off in front of the road and you just curse them and like <laughs> something happens to them. So obviously this power has to be regulated the dosage right so that's what they're trying to say and then finally what they're trying to say is with the food and with the chemicals with the medicine that sumi spoke about the last time and especially after what they're trying to say is after some time in other words uh, they're saying that this there will be spread of energy anatomy energy energetic anatomy uh, has happened in all fields like physics now to a certain extent um, most of the fields now it'll slowly start happening to ourselves so emotional energetic anatomy mental energetic anatomy spiritual energetic anatomy so they're going step by step and then with the spreading of this energetic uh, knowledge and knowing yourself and knowing about energy throughout the earth what they're saying is in other words the earth will undergo a global initiation all right what is the meaning of initiation Initiation means to open a new horizon, all right? So when people are aware of healing, when people are aware of, say, if you're looking, if you've done pranic healing or energy, they will start to become aware of subtle energy, things that they cannot see but do exist, right? Because of subtle energy, they will go into deeper teachings and practices, right? Because first, you have to believe that there are things that you can't see and touch immediately that do have an effect on you then you'll look at the higher level spiritual effects so they'll go into uh, deeper teachings and studies because of subtle uh, energies that people will start to understand their own religion okay they'll start to understand their own religion not just the procedure behind uh, the, the procedure but the meaning behind the procedure the meaning behind the practices the energy the effect of the practices they can understand the descent of the holy spirit for example in christianity they can understand the concept of trinity being three and one at the same time uh, they can understand the concept of the soul they can understand the concept of rays if you know about theosophy rays as energies that is why there's and then they'll realize because people belong to different rays that's why there are different opinions because a soul belongs to a certain types of energy all right not only are you a soul they're talking about you're a soul here but not only are you a soul each soul belongs to a certain type of energy and each types of energy look at things differently so if you have that kind of comprehension, then you will be more tolerant and more integrating. Okay. <clears throat> Can you just imagine like a population of highly developed people, very courteous, very talented, very intuitive, psychic, very uh, sensitive, also sexually satisfied because um, that is also to do with energy, right? And all this is part of uh, energy. When you go into education, uh, the energetic aspect will come into it. People already are saying, you know, in the before there was a discipline system, shouting system. Now they say, look, when you shout, the heart chakra becomes small and the person doesn't bloom, doesn't grow. So you need to provide love. You need to provide understanding. And there will be more of that in schools, which is already happening. And there will be uh, transmutation of energy, creative energy from, from maybe sexual energy transmuted into higher energy. So all that technology will be given in the schools. And they will also be taught how to invoke to certain angels and beings who help assist 
in expediting uh, the absorption of mental and emotional energy. Okay, so can you imagine you you will be bringing children of such high quality because if your energy is good, the wife's energy is good, you're emotionally, mentally stable, and we already know that that affects the fetus. The child will be of high quality, right? So can you imagine all the houses are also built in such a way where they know of energy and uh, their feng shui, vastu, whatever you want to call it, vastu shastri, uh, it's built in such a way that it will promote health, it will promote abundance, it will uh, uh, promote quality. The, uh, the prana coming into the house is beneficiary for benefiting the people. Can you imagine agriculture production being increased that Sumi spoke about without poisoning Mother Earth? All of this will manifest because of energy in the future. So energy healing is like the trunk or energy is like a trunk of a tree. And from it comes different sciences. It'll come modern education, super, super modern education. So those kind of things. So that's basically what they're trying to tell you. And they're giving you the three important thing, steps in those days. But now we've already revealed the spiritual anatomy of man, um, which is uh, which, which, what they're talking about, understanding your true self and the law of karma and all that. That has been revealed already by many schools, not just uh, the pranic healing school. And with that, that's it. That's the gist of the last two pages. And thank you very much and goodbye. I'm ending meeting for all. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's very eager to go. No, no, no. Uh, so not. one so, of the things that, that I, when, when he was talking, I realized, you know, even today though people are so educated, when they get emotional, there are some crazy things people do. I remember I had a patient who came to me regularly and uh, every full moon, he would get really psychically uh, affected. And he says, Sumi, if I'm going to be on the road, I'm sure I'm going to have an accident. And all these uh, attacks that were sent to him was from his ex-wife. So even though they separated, they divorced, for whatever reason, she still felt the need to try and harm uh, this gentleman. Um, I know of a husband and wife who, where the wife was so upset with the husband. She said, I go to church uh, to pray to God that uh, my husband will actually go through a very, very difficult time, right? I mean, the word she used is, and then for me, it's like you go to a holy place and you ask that the other person be cursed, correct? So even though we are educated, even though we understand all these things sometimes, uh, the emotional body of the human race uh, you've got to remember uh, if you've done the other theosophical studies is not completely evolved so it's almost like the physical body has you know improved to a to a high degree and you know the kind of uh, body structure we have the kind of uh, the lifespan uh, yeah the, the lifespan everything has definitely been enhanced as the uh, race has grown right now even the mental if you notice what we were like 50 years ago and what we are right now we've jumped even mentally, but emotionally, what our grandparents were doing and what we're doing is almost the same, right? They don't know how to deal with their emotions. Our parents didn't know how to deal with their emotions. We still don't know how to deal with our emotions. And so we're still struggling with trying to deal with this, even with others, right? So, me, so for me, as uh, the concept of energy starts to change, uh, the education of this in the human race starts to uh, get enhanced and works with all uh, other aspects. I think maybe the psychic faculty, this is my my assumption yeah this is not written there but for me maybe the psychic faculty will then open up and so when you get angry right they can actually see this this uh, blast of dirty reddish energy coming out of you if you are sad they can actually see the energy so just like you and i don't like wearing dirty clothes i mean we don't like a print on it right we don't like something fallen on it we go and wash it off so similarly i feel maybe that's going to be one way that the emotion that the uh, emotions will be taken care of is when people start to notice oh my god this is what's happening to me when i've gotten upset or when i've gotten violent or when i've gotten uh, sad or depressed or jealous you can actually see it you know it's it's going to be right there and so if you start to see it just like you would with dirt on the floor or anywhere else you will see to it that you take care of it um, many of us here are hatha yogis. Master Choa has said purification is more important than meditation. <laughs> but sometimes it's easier to meditate than to purify, right? So you might even meditate on a regular basis, but when it comes to purification, whether it's your breathing, whether it's your exercise, uh, and we have other techniques, right? We don't bother to do that as regularly, including me. I know I should do it. I know I'm, uh, that will definitely help me, but sometimes it just can, can kind of get slips away. But I never forget to brush my teeth. <laughs> I never forget to have a bath, right? Just like those things for the physical body, to keep it clean, 
uh, realizing that the germs, uh, the whatever deposits on my body can further affect my physical health. I'm aware of it and, and I definitely want to take care of it. Similarly, I feel that the emotions, right, the impurities that affect the health and the, uh, the system is something that probably will happen uh, as, as time goes and we'll be able to take care of it better. Uh, so that's that's one way of hoping that the human race <laughs> evolves out of their emotional uh, do offness. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but we're definitely retarded in that sense. Yeah, emotionally we we stunted. Let's use that word better than the others. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, um, I'm sorry, it's nothing much. Uh, Ravka, if you want to make your body strong, if you've done anathetic yoga, you have to do the breathing exercises before your meditation. Uh, the breathing exercise, especially the sequence, makes the body very strong and makes it clean so the energy can flow through properly without you having uh, issues. The other way to do it is to do the Tibetan uh, exercises, if you know them, uh, and the uh, mental physical exercises, if you know them. Those make the body very, very strong. So especially with the Tibetan exercises, regular practice of Tibetan exercise, uh, five Tibetan rites, um, they would make your body strong. If you don't know them, you will know them soon. So just uh, be patient. And there's yeah. a self-healing course that's just been launched. And in that, they teach you the five Tibetan ones also. Correct. If you still can't get access for whatever reason, uh, then you can always get the book. Uh, there is the five Tibetan right book that's available uh, for you to buy. And you can follow that as well. Uh, so those of you who have friends, who have uh, family, who are, you know, especially with this lockdown, I know many people have said, you know, my husband has suddenly started doing the meditation with me. My, you know, the elderly people in the house, the in-laws have started doing the meditation. Your kids have started doing the meditation. Now they might want something more. And uh, that's why I has decided keeping the pandemic and noticing that most people in many places cannot really uh, congregate in, in a group uh, to do and learn uh, the uh, various courses, they've offered now the, uh, the Pranic Self Healing course. So you can just sit there at home with your laptop, uh, register for the class, and it's a one-day class and you can actually learn this. So you can introduce it to people who are interested, right, uh, both from within the school and outside. And uh, the other one is achieving oneness with the higher soul. So as you notice at the end when Amit was talking about it, he says there is this inner, um, the, the real you, right, and that connection that you need to have. A lot more will be revealed in that course. That's also an online course. It's called Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul. So if you have other friends and friends, family, uh, neighbors, uh, people who've come to your Twin Heart sessions who are interested, that would be another course, all coming in the first uh, week of October, right? So probably starting from the 2nd of October, this is all going to come uh, all over. And uh, so you may register if you've not done any of the courses of GMCKS. But if you've already done these courses, it's a good way to try and get others to come into the school. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically it from uh, Amit and I. Thank again, you. goodbye. Yes. And again, thank you so much, people, because without you, <laughs> we wouldn't be sitting here, honestly. And after this, we won't be sitting here. Definitely not together to take a, a session for a while. But we hope that all of you will continue to be safe, healthy. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of your family. Try to do enough to enhance your immune system. Try to take care of the people around you. It's very important. I'm still learning. I've, I haven't learned the balance between work and family and <laughs> all the other things that I'm doing from home. It's completely a new schedule, uh, but we will hopefully all work that out and, and move forward. And I hope to see you in the future. Yes, uh, till we meet either online <laughs> or offline, wherever it is. Thank you so much. and. Atma namaste. Atma, namaste. We will end with a prayer. Don't uh, worry. Uh, Rafka, um, if you want Theosophy books, I know you're in Iraq, but uh, you can just get them online for now. Um, you know, just read them uh, online. And if you go to iBooks, there are many of them downloadable for free on the iBooks if you have Apple. And if you don't, just Google the name of the book. Uh, and um, uh, there are many websites that have the PDF versions and all that. And then when you travel to India anytime or when you're in... I don't know whether in Dubai they have the Theosophy books. Do, do they have it in the foundation? I'm not sure, but you can just buy it. Not you can ask someone, that. anyone coming from India, so many people from the Middle East, I'm sure once they start traveling to the ashram, to the other parts, a lot of Arhatic yogis travel to India from all over the Middle East and uh, they, can, they can get you the book and they can bring it. So, so you, can, uh, you can download it with the promise of you will buy the book later <laughs> for now. So it's okay. Yes. Right. So we will miss meeting you every evening. 
Uh, it's been <laughs> a four-month journey with all of you. And we've been doing it so consistently, except for a couple of uh, days when we had our Charedani session. Uh, we really appreciate all that you have done, being consistent. And I've seen many of your faces every time yeah. here. Started so, with 300, we've gone down to 78, 80. <laughs> Very close law. <laughs> there. So, so all of you, thank you for turning on your cameras. It's nice to see your faces. I've been seeing it for so long. Uh, all the way from uh, Nepal to Punjab to thank you all the way from Iraq. Um, sorry, I don't know where you're from since it's almost ending from Kolkata. And um, So our else? long distance relationship is coming to an end. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't last for too long, remember? <laughs> from Dubai. Yeah. Okay, thank you. From, uh, yes, parts of Maharashtra. And where else? Yes, Kolkata I mentioned, Mumbai, yes. Uh, anybody else? Mumbai is still Maharashtra. <laughs> yeah, Mumbai is still Maharashtra for us, yes. Bluru? Uh, oh, Bengaluru. Bengaluru, what are you saying, man? <laughs> no, I just read it as it is. Rajasthan, thank you. Uh, Where's that? Number Bengaluru, yes. <laughs> Oman, thank you. Belgium, Jamshedpur. The hills of Uttarakhand, yeah. yes. Thank you all. Uh, you've been from all parts of India, and many of you from different parts of the globe as well. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's been a wonderful I hope journey. you remember the beginning of the book. <laughs> Do uh, you remember that? Should we take a test now? <laughs> you can refer to the book though. <laughs> all the prana, the spirale, the and the spirales, Yes. And what happens? What is nerve cell? <laughs> yes. Chennai, thank you. Perfect. So uh, with that, we'll now end. Like I said, it's going to be slightly early today, uh, but it's basically uh, a, a big thank you again uh, from all of us, uh, the beings. Thank you to everyone else. Thank you <laughs> to keeping our Wi-Fi connection consistent for all the 45 sessions. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So shall we end with a prayer? Thank you one and all. Let's close our eyes, connect tongue to the palate. It would be nice to have a test. Oh my God. <laughs> huh? Do it. <laughs> yes. you, you might be tested. You don't say those things. Yeah. The higher beings. Yeah. You know, you, you will know if you remember this stuff when people start talking about other things. Can you actually relate it? You know, actually, that? what's also important to remember is what you don't know. We, we have a lot of things that, you know, we have to fill some gaps. Yeah. We couldn't so, answer everything if you so remember. If there you are keep times. that in mind, then when you read other books, you will fill the gaps. If you don't, then you might just skimp over that. Have you noticed that? Sometimes, you know, if you had not read this one and wondered about it, you would have just maybe skipped over the 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 paragraph in another book. Thank you, Anne. If that's the way to keep us behind, <laughs> appreciate that sentiment. Yes. Uh, so if you want to uh, write to us, my name is Sumi, S-U-M-I, at pranikhealing.co.in. And this is... You can just email her. A-M-I-T at pranikhealing.co.in. <laughs> All right, that's us. No, and you so, can you can email, no problem. Yeah, so. actually, he replies, you know, more frequently than me. I invariably get stuck with other things. Uh, but anyways, that's our email ID. So let's end with a prayer, shall we? It's MIT, not MITH. For yeah, people just four letters. S below Maharashtra. S U M I A M I T. All just four letters there. Let's go. The nice four letters. If you're thinking of other things, <laughs> inhale and exhale. Relax. Let's feel gratitude, respect, and love to the Supreme Being, to all the great teachers, especially of theosophy, the great beings of knowledge, light, and power, to our teacher, Grandmaster Chua, to all the beings that helped us with our communication, internet connections, our respective Wi-Fi's, to the great beings of education and knowledge, to all the great authors who've put this book together to help us have greater, deeper understanding. Thank you all. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, we thank you for your great, great blessings. Thank you for your tremendous love, patience with us. Thank you for blessing us with all the wisdom and knowledge and, and understanding. Thank you for helping us be open and receptive to all this priceless teachings. We ask you to continue to help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge deep into our being so we as instruments may be of better use to you. We ask for your help and blessings to continue to use this knowledge to help others, those around us, to serve others, to use this to make this world a better place. 
and to be instrumental in eradicating the suffering globally. We offer ourselves as instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Feel gratitude, respect and love. Say thank you, thank you, thank you. You will get a response of energy flowing down into you. Gratefully accept all this energy. Assimilate it. It will further help you have a clearer understanding of these teachings. Inhale and exhale deep into your being. Absorb all the energies and blessings. Thank you, everybody. Atma Namaste. It was a wonderful journey. Thank you for being with us one last time. Thank you. Enjoy. Please join other sessions and uh, make use of all the knowledge. <laughs> yes. Try and sew everything together so you have a huge, beautiful collage that makes sense. <laughs> yep. Enjoy. We'll see you. One thing I would recommend if you're studying is that you be focused in, in what you're studying. Now, um, the reason I actually... Uh, want to do this one again was because uh, we're doing a lot of CPH and CPH mentoring and all that. So it's good to know this. It's in line with healing, right? Uh, and understanding of that. So it depends on sometimes uh, uh, what, how you want to. So with this, that's why I refer to advanced pranic healing, psychotherapy, wherever, you know, so it makes you understand. Uh, and you can see what Alice Bailey said about it. You can say what uh, Bishop Ledpeter said about it. So whenever you study uh, it, I would recommend focus studying. Otherwise, you know, what happens is the studying becomes very scattered. Uh, very scattered. So if you want to study about, say, the spiritual essence of man, there's a book by Master Cho about it, or spiritual anatomy. I would suggest spiritual essence of man, achieving oneness with the higher soul. Uh, there's a book on I am by Ramana Maharishi. There's a book uh, about the soul by, I think, Paramahansa Yogananda. I think there's, an, uh, I think, one or two books by, um, there's a textbooks of uh, the first, First Principles of Theosophy. So all that is in line in the same subject. And then you can cross-reference everything. And so your studying becomes very, very, um, you know, focused. Uh, rather than you study a little bit on the solar system, then you study a little bit on this and you study a bit on that and this and this and this. And then you're, you're, I don't know whether your brain can synthesize all this data. But if you, if you focus on one thing for, for a couple of months, you understand that we focus on this. But at the same time, I, I tell you, We've done quite a bit of the advanced and basic books. I've given you guys a lot of quotation from Mahasachwa's book. So you have sneakily studied those as well. So, uh, you know, of course, now that was digested for you and provided to you. But uh, in general, when you study, it's always good to say, okay, what did this guy say about it? What did this guy say about it? Maybe one person will give you the answer to what the other person didn't give you the answer to. Or maybe uh, the other person will validate what they're trying to say. So if four spiritual teachers have said it, they're not in communication with the other, so maybe it's, uh, it's, it, it could be validated and could be uh, agreed. So, so for your future studies, uh, that would be, but what about crystal healing course online? No, that is one course that's almost impossible to do. I mean, the crystals, you have to give the crystals, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean of all the classes from Psyche Cell Defense to other one, crystal, crystal would be... Impossible to teach if you don't have crystals at the yeah, other end. And, and, and then you know it's and the right crystals, yeah, because there are all kinds of crystals. And then you'll have someone laying or down over there, and you. <laughs> so right. So for now, only these two are online. There will be other higher courses that might come based on the need and uh, and also the instructor.